mm -hmm. or talk about Cedric, but they always mention Kipkin. Okay. That's something that I think Ed, Cedric would really appreciate that. You know, he he you know he gets really upset sometimes when people forget that you know he was so closely uh, associated with the Kipkin archetype, and he would really really <laughs> love it if nobody ever forgot that. I get the impression <laughs> that you were being sarcastic, and now I feel a little bad for bringing up the Kipkin. <laughs> Sorry, Cedric. So, Ian, going down to six cards now. You know, uh, somebody points out a play that, nah, nah, we're, you know, two matches beyond it now, but uh, in the, actually, I'm sorry, it was just last match, it was Bennett Snyder's last match, where uh, where he could have actually flashed in the uh, the Scrib Ranger and bounced the land to save it from, yeah, from, from, from the wasteland. From the yeah. wasteland yeah. Wasn't even thinking about that. Instead, he just flashed it in, and it, you know, let the land die. Or he actually well, he, he, he let the land die. He, he got had... forced when he flashed it in. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so he could not have bounced he it. He couldn't have bounced it. That's right, I forgot. Again. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. So to uh, Norman Crone, it, the, that was his intention when he cast the Scrib Ranger. That's kind of what sent him, sent him on tilt. Was I don't even know if that was his that. intention, because I think he added mana from the land, dumped it, and then paid oh, mana and right. flashed the Scrib Ranger. So. That was actually pretty bad of him then. Yeah, I think he missed that play, but it got forced anyway. It got forced anyway, so. <clears throat> it, it, it's going to be irrelevant anyway, but. Uh, All right, somebody's telling us that we have to go to a place called Rocky or Cocos. All right, yeah, but in. if it's a 30-minute round-trip drive, we really don't have, have a way to, to do that. <laughs> Nothing was within walking distance of this place, so. Reasonable walking distance. All right, All right so Ian, leading things off. Uh, turn one, Mox Diamond and uh, Forest there. Uh, playing the Mox Diamond on turn one despite not having a play. Uh, trying to dodge something like Spell Pierce here. This one doesn't have Spell Pierce actually. This one this time has Stifle. It's funny, he's playing around Spell Pierce now. And then his opponent doesn't have Spell Pierce. And before he was playing around Stifle, his opponent didn't have Stifle on the deck. <laughs> Do you think they gave him the wrong Rock Delver deck for each time? I don't, you may be. Like, like, it actually it seems that way. <laughs> That's actually a good point. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I know that's crazy, but it's possible. So Delver from Bennett. Yeah, so Thoughtseize off the top for Ian. Let's see what he sees. He sees Delver, Thoughtscour, Lightning Bolt, Scalding Tarn, Polluted Delta, and Wasteland. Uh, yeah, I mean, depending on what your hand is. Yeah, you could take Bolt, you could take Delver here. Yeah. That would, you know. Both those seem fine. He takes Delver. Okay. Means whatever it is he's got, he's fine with it getting bolted. I think if I have like a pernicious deed in my hand, I just take Thought Scour. Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's only if I have a deed in my hand, which is Ooh, a stifle off the top. And that's a really good card to get there because it's clear that Ian's missing land drops, and having that stifle in your hand, if, as long as you keep some blue mana open, it's going to be really hard for Ian to ever crack a fetch land. Although Ian has been doing a really good job playing around Stifles so far this tournament. All right, in for three. Ian uh, going to fall to 15 here. Ian. He's a green sun zenith for one, and is Bennett. Bennett allows that to resolve. Yeah. Uh, Stifle not going to do much against the green sun, for one. All right, so uh, Birds of Paradise comes down, and I imagine that's going to get hit by a lightning bolt. Yeah, I think one of the Ian unfortunate imagines. things about <laughs> One of the unfortunate things about flying in the air is that lightning bolts can often hit you. And there's the bolt for the bird. Bolt the bird, I think, is actually a you know, yeah. common common thing to say. It's also somebody's Twitter name that uh, I talked to a bit on Twitter. And it's funny because I actually... One of the early lessons in magic. Yeah. And it's really bolt Adrian the yeah. bird. <laughs> so there it is, a classic play. And Delver of Secrets. Comes in. Insectile putting, Aberration. Ian at 12. Becoming a classic play. It's <laughs> on its own. <laughs> Tarmogoyf down for Bennett Snyder. Ian now... Ian a 4-5. Um, yeah, Ian, these Tarmogoyfs uh, are always four or fives. Seems that way. <laughs> Ian really seems like he's having a lot of trouble getting into this game. Yeah, having a lot of trouble with his mana. Ben Snyder's been playing a lot of games like this, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
My superpower is my parents. Yeah, my opponents have terrible luck. Missed. Yeah. <laughs> He's a he's a high tide opponent. I couldn't hit a fourth land drop despite like three ponders and like <laughs> two preordains. Like he's, he's he also stifled a, a fetch land at one point too. Yeah, right? yeah, he you guys did. saw that. And then it became relevant because I think he he cast turnabout and it got spell pierced or uh, dazed. It got dazed. Yeah. And it was like oh, of course I just lost. You stifled my my fetch land where I would have had an island here to pay for the days. Oh. It's pretty funny. So he had to like force it through. He had to force through a turnabout to get his opponent's creatures tapped. So just fog. He was just trying to fog. Uh, All right, so Knight of the Relic from Ian. And Ian's going to need to uh, find something to deal with that Delver pretty quick. Bennett sacrificing Pluto Delta, falling down to 17 now. Grabbing Volcanic Island. A thought Scour, the one we saw very early in the game. Yeah. It's going to turn on his threshold and Hits. net him an extra card. I love Thought Scour in the Stelver list because exactly that. It turns on the uh, the threshold like so easily. Uh, yeah, it makes you... your Mongoose such a threat so easily. Yeah, I I also like, I mean, no Snapcasters in this it's list. Also, it I also works like... pretty well with Brainstorm. You know, you put two cards back. Right, and, and you then dump you, them you away. Yeah. Remove them. So, you know, just like a fetch line would. Wastes away better. Ian's land, and uh, Ian at least able to get the knight into play before, uh, before going back down to two sources of mana. And uh, I, how big is that knight? I, I it must not be very big. I, I guess it's it's like a 4-4 four four is my guess. Yeah, it's because just one see, short. Yeah, it's one short of actually being able to deal with that goy. And uh, Ian now down to five here. Stay tuned. We'll be giving away a Gen Con badge right after this game. We'll be uh, we'll be announcing a question. You guys can start tweeting in your answer to that. But uh, Andrew Tenjum is uh, is not not the answer. <laughs> it is the previous answer, and it's already been given away. All right. So another Delver from Bennett and a swing and That's Ian Stone now Forge Mystic for me. into a Stoneforge Mystic. This will be this will be something for him, maybe. Um, Really, all depends on if he can get it to resolve and then manage to keep yeah. that Stoneforge Mystic around to uh, theoretically. I mean, it's very the, unlikely this game is going to go more than one more turn because Bennett has the other Delver in play and pondered last turn. So the Ponder probably set this Delver up to flip and he's going to be able to attack for lethal. Right on. Okay, so it. Yeah. And uh, Ian well, I guess basically he, no, just he played could, Squire. He could knight for a maze, but I don't really. Oh, so I guess he didn't have another. That's weird. He didn't. Uh, Ian, I mean Bennett, stifled the uh, in, the enters the battlefield trigger on on the Stoneforge. Stoneforge. Yeah. So it was basically Squire. So maybe Ian we'll has equipment weird. in his hand. Bennett didn't <laughs> set up the. Uh, he didn't set up the Delver. The Delver, flip. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I guess Ian, despite being so light on mana, he's going to be forced to search for a maze of it here. I imagine. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yep, and that's exactly what he does. Gonna untap that Delver of Secrets. <clears throat> and a Wasteland that's gonna deal with that maze, and that's it's gonna be a pretty big problem now. Yeah, so Ian, with uh, not much work going on for him on this side of the table. Passes the turn and uh, feels the thought scour, and that's gonna be it. Oh no, a sword supply shares from Ian. He's gonna keep this going for a little while longer. Bennett popping back up to 20 from that sword supply shares. Hanging on by his fingernails. Yeah. Falling down to one life here from this Delver swing. Also, uh, if Bennett chooses to attack with the Goyfs, he's going to have to chump block with that Mystic, but I doubt he's going to do that. Maybe you Thought Scour before your attack step. That way you see if you're drawing another guy, and then if you are drawing another guy, you attack with both Goyfs, but if you're not, you don't. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah, so that's exactly what he's gonna do. 
Yeah. Fought Scour Fought pre combat. Yeah. Fork bolt, fork bolt. Uh, it's a nimble mongoose there. And yep, yeah, he uh, must have drawn a creature. And uh, everybody in. Delver gets in, knocks Ian to one. Yeah. And he drew another guy. Plays another Delver, says go. Now Ian and down to one, and it's not looking like yeah. there's a chance so we're of going winning. To game so. Well played by Bennett. Bennett uh, played that game in a way that it prevented his opponent from having any outs. Uh, that was very correct to uh, Fought Scour there prior to combat and uh, see, you know, if I'm going to draw a creature, then I attack with everybody and guaranteed we win no matter what. And if I don't draw a guy, then I can just attack with my Delver and put myself in a position where I'm like 99% to win. So. Very well done, just locking it up completely. Yeah. I appreciate that type of play. It was, it was tight, yeah. So uh, we're going to bring you the rest of that match in just a minute, but we're going to take a quick break. Not an mm -hmm. actual break, but just a break from the match, because we want to give you guys a Gen Con badge. So <laughs> uh, we... Uh, so nice, yeah. I was like, we're gonna, <laughs> Jesse's over there going, what? We're taking a break. <laughs> I don't think we're taking a break. So we've got a question for you guys. Uh, another event was held this weekend. It's over yeah. with now. It's a pretty exciting event. Pro Tour Abyssin Restored. Alex Hayne, the winner of, of Pro Tour Abyssin Restored with the Miracle deck. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. But uh, another yeah. another uh, crown was given out, so, yeah. so to speak. A Rookie of the Year was also crowned this year. So who, the question is, who was the Rookie of the Year? Who was yeah. crowned Rookie of the Year at Pro Tour Abyssin Restored? And we had the overlapping season, so it's a bit weird how it worked out this year, but they're you know, there is a Rookie of the Year, and we'd like to know who it is. Yep, crowned just this weekend. And uh, tweet your answer with the, uh, the hashtag SCG Premium down there. There it is. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, random winner, random correct answer will win a free Gen Con badge, so pretty cool. All right, you can back to the table. Yeah, hop back in here. On the right, we have Ian Ellis piloting... Uh, his uh, Dark Horizons deck, and he's playing against Bennett Snyder, who is playing Rug Delver. And, you know, not necessarily running very hot himself, but his opponents were running extremely cold. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting. And, and look at the difference. Look at, look at these guys. They're having a blast. They're, they're chatting and laughing. It's like they're in the finals. Have fun. Ian just got rolled and he's laughing and talking and, yeah. you know. Apparently these guys are from the same gaming group called the Monster Den. The Monster Den? Oh, wow. Okay, so both these guys play the same shop. Huh. That's awesome. Awesome, yeah. And the, the Monster's Den, the Monster Den. Monster Den, yeah. All right, so that's pretty cool. Monster Den represent in the finals here of SCG Madison. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty cool to see these guys. Uh, these guys obviously know each other. So, and while you guys are waiting for uh, game two to start, uh, you guys should try Google searching Zerg Rush. You tried that yet? Yeah, I have. It's it pretty, pretty awesome. Cool. You guys sit and watch the entire thing too. Yeah. Oh, you gotta play. Oh, you you can play. Yeah. yeah I yeah. didn't realize that. I was just staring at it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, the really letters cool. are Zerglings, and if you double click them, they disappear. So it like records your APM and you have to destroy them and like they go all over the page. You have to like scroll down and destroy them so they don't eat it from the bottom. I just and, watched like, them have, eat like, the entire page. I was like, that was it's cool. The best. It's so much fun. <laughs> and not even fun realize. micro exercises. Google is awesome. <laughs> Man, all these people tweeting in at us with answers. I want to see, you know, some interaction here. And now uh Post sideboard here. We've already talked about the sideboard options both these players have available to them. Ian Ellis has been crushing Rug Delver players in games two and three that we've been watching because he has access to Choke, Timely Reinforcements, Pernicious Deed, um, Thalia. All these cards are just awesome. Inquisition of Kozilek. Um, post board, Bennett Snyder. Let's see if he has anything. He does have some merch. That's going to be pretty good. He's got four Apparently copies of that. Dinner owes the other one dinner after this. What, what is that? The, the trophy, whoever wins, owes the other one dinner? Other one dinner. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. either way, they're both going to be pretty happy here. I mean, first and second of this event and having the other one buy them dinner. Um, As I remember, Snyder will also probably bring in a Life from the Loam. That'll be pretty good here. That's actually a card that none of the other Rug Delver players have had access to against anyone else, and it's going to be really good against him. So... Turn one birds from Ian. Exactly what he wants to be doing. 
Did you have to say dinner? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know what it made me think of is Chris Van Meter eating macaroni and cheese out of his trophy last year. He ate macaroni, he had pictures on Facebook, eating macaroni and cheese out of his trophy from, I think it was Orlando. That's awesome. Man, now I just can't stop thinking about macaroni and cheese. I know. <laughs> I'm Delver of secrets. <laughs> I'm turned one from Bennett Snyder. Bennett Snyder, so. Both guys with a strong start. Same guy does it again. Submerge your birds. Oh, so Ian now has to draw and replay that bird. <laughs> Swords your Delver. Get it out of here. Get out of Rock here. Rock is going <laughs> to get rid of that Delver. And then another Birds of Paradise. Well, it's the same bird. It was well, submerged. Yeah, it was submerged. Yeah. The game seems to be. The mini free plow under. Also yeah, known much. as a time walk. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Bennett brainstorming here. It's a main phase brainstorm. Oh. It looks like he doesn't have a land, so he's forced to use that brainstorm. That would be phase. why he main phase brainstorm. He has, uh, oh, he has wasteland, but he's fine with wastelanding. Uh, okay, wasteland your Caracas. Go, Ian Ellis, Sylvan Library. Go. Yeah, and that's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Ian... we've seen Ian. Uh, Every game that Ian has managed to either stick Sylvan Library or Sensei Top and have him play for a couple turns has resulted in him winning. All right, you slow down, Ian. You guys, they started going real fast for a second. Uh, Delver from Bennett there on his turn. But, you know, you don't want Ian to go too fast and accidentally draw an extra card from Sylvan Library. You know, go to go an extra card deep or something. So, good job there slowing, slowing it down, making sure you're drawing the right number of cards. So, Mox Diamond. That's three <laughs> maelstrom pulse. I love, I love how he just. I hate Delver. I'm gonna swords at him. I'm gonna throw a maelstrom I think he pulse. He just throws his cards. Like, yeah. His removal spells get thrown a lot. Well, I don't see. I don't remember They're him doing shots, that. Yeah, know? like <laughs> he's <just> a gambit. <laughs> X Men. Totally. Uh, powering up the cards and throwing them, blowing things up. So maelstrom pulse resolves on Bennett's uh, Delver. I'll pay three to kill your one drop. And now uh, Ian. Plays Knight of the Reliquary. Bennett unable to get a second mana source. Um, and he's just playing draw go here. Literally draw go, yeah. not even land drop go. And yeah, Ian two, is. Uh, two uh, games that have not been uh, very good because of some uh, mana screw so far in this finals. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how big the knight is or the knights are, sorry. Yeah, but, <laughs> but they're uh, just getting bigger now because he just. Yeah, I mean, one of the problems with Bennett's deck historically is that it. Like a lot of the, what some a lot of people say is the problem with Mark Elvers that it cannot be to the Knight of the Royal Quarry. Mm -hmm. So when you haven't played a, when you don't have a threat on the table and you haven't played a second land yet and your opponent has two knights, yeah, <laughs> I'm guessing uh, it's it's tough. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, very uphill battle. I think it's actually straight up. Yes. <laughs> and no, not only that, you Ian, know you know who might be able to fight a battle that's straight up. Who's that? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise could do. Have it. you ever seen him mountain climb in those Mission Impossible movies? Bennett Snyder says, "I'm not trying to fight this battle. Yeah. Let's go to game three. I'm not Tom Cruise. <laughs> you know, Bennett maybe just you know both of these guys. It's just uh, like I'm just looking forward to dinner. Yeah. And if I lose, you gotta pay. So let's go to game three. Yeah, right. it's just like I'm gonna now maelstrom to pulse three here. I'm gonna throw my maelstrom pulses at your Delvers. So. Very again, quick uh, game too. Gotta love it. This uh, this match again post board. I think it really favors Ian here. Timely reinforcements are just so good against Rug Delver. That's a card you never see in Legacy. You know, after uh, after Justin and Paul's match, I was like, you know, he had timely reinforcements. That was kind of insane. And Justin's like, yeah, why was he playing that in Legacy? And I was like, can you beat that card? He's like, no. And That's I was why like, he's playing it. Well, a lot of people play Rug Delver, <laughs> man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's wrong with these people playing cards I can't beat? I was like, can a red deck beat that card either? No. That card's actually really good. Yeah. It's like one of the better cyborg cards we've seen. It's, it's like, awesome. I love it. I, like, I remember that was, I think, my favorite card from, uh, from M12 last year. Uh, it's just like, this card seems really good. I think that and card Brad, will continue to have an Brad effect. Brad Nelson says, let me see the art on it. Because we, we had him on the podcast, and he was like, what's the art on it look like? Oh, yeah, that's good art. It's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, Wizards only commissions. He puts, they put the good art on the good cards. It was just a that's funny way funny. to... Uh, to <laughs> that's how Brad Nelson apparently evaluates cards. So you see him when he does his set reviews. He's like looking at the card. He puts it up. 
That's good art, it's good. <laughs> okay, so uh, Bennett Snyder just had a Misty Rainforest for turn one, and Ian, on his turn one, plays a Forest and a Mox Diamond. Let's see if he has a play to go with that. He has a... Oh. What? That? I don't know if that was passing the turn. It's a hand motion that uh, a karate could chop have been. or something. Yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> All right, Sylvan Library. They're playing a little bit with each other. Clearly friends. And a turn two Sylvan Library, and we've seen what that can do for Ian. Again, Ian has not lost a game that we've watched him play where he's had a Sylvan Library or top and play for more than two turns. Just hasn't happened. And we've watched him play a lot of rounds. Bennett Snyder with another Fetchland. Has a Tarmogoyf in hand. Will he decide to play it this turn? Also has a Scavenging Ooze in hand. Alright, cracks both these fetch lines. Dropping himself down to 18 here. About to uh, stick a 1-2 Tarmogoyf onto the table. Tarmogoyf. That is the Squire Goyf. Just a 1 2. But it's a threat and it's potentially, uh, very potentially, or uh, potentially a very large threat. Yeah, I mean, it can become a 4 5 in a moment's notice. Yeah. You go Thought Scour and Thought Scour can just do it. Beast. You go Thought Scour, Ancient Grudge. You cast your Ancient Grudge and suddenly that thing's like 5 6. Yeah. All right. And a Wasteland. And a Swords to Plash. Swords to Plash here from Ian. And Bennett's board is looking very similar to the way it ended. he ended last game. It's, this is looking very similar to game two. Look at the Sylvan Library, Mox and a, and a Forest to, uh, to Bennett's lone volcanic island. So Bennett's going to brainstorm here. He did look like he was about to play Wasteland, but it looks like he's deciding to, uh, Ooh, to uh, hold pretty, off. Uh, he's pretty nice card there. Submerge is really good here. He's got and he life does hit, on the loan. Yeah, life on the loan is, it can actually uh, help him out a lot if he's, if he's mana screwed. And I'm kind of getting the impression that that's why he brainstormed here. Now he's going to play a Wasteland. On top. I think he really wants, uh, like, it, if he's able to get Loam Wasteland going, he's going to be in a pretty good spot here. That's really what he wants to do. He has no other lands in hand. No, it's just the Wasteland. So, and I mean, he can make the game last for a long time. He can really go into control mode here, which is something you don't really see the Rug deck do very often. But, uh, you know, the fact that he has uh, his Loam Wasteland combo near the top of his deck, and he has Submerge in his hand, along with uh, a good amount of blue interaction, uh, and he's even got an Ancient Crutch. Well, he can really make this game go pretty long if he wants to. Alright, and uh, Scavenging Ooze coming down. It's pretty good for Ian. Ian Ellis, with the Scavenging Ooze on the table, can, uh, can't really grow it, but uh, can ensure that Bennett Snyder's future Tarmogoyfs be a little bit smaller. Now uh, Bennett Snyder could simply submerge the scavenging use during Ian's attack step. Maybe he wants to do it during his upkeep. Yeah, what Ian doesn't know is that Bennett is uh, probably going to be trying to get Life in the Loam going momentarily and removing some lands actually might have been a better idea than getting rid of the Brainstorm. There's no Snapcasters. Yep. Uh, I understand it's, uh, it's, he's, you know, as long as Ian has a uh, yeah, as long as Ian has three uh, has three mana open, uh, Life on the Loam does a whole lot of nothing. Uh, Ian can just respond by uh, tapping three mana and removing the three lands that get targeted from the game. And a surge from Bennett. Ian gonna remove one of your lands. The dual land. 
seems reasonable. And a Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh, isn't there a Spell Snare in the hand of Bennett? Hmm. Well, I guess he has Ancient Grudge. Maybe he's just... Yeah, he... But, I don't know. Eh. So Stoneforge Mystic Resolve gets a Batter Skull. Bennett does seem to have Spell Snare, but he must be just holding it for something uh, he deems more threatening. And, like you said, he has an Ancient Grudge, so he might just... He's fine with a Batter Skull. Yeah, I mean, the one issue, though, is that, uh, I mean, Ian... I guess, oh, Ian shuffled away the ooze. I was going to say that Ian could use the ooze to remove the Ancient Grudge uh, after it's cast and then, you know, be able to minimize its uh, its value. Maybe another reason why Bennett allowed the uh, Stoneforge to resolve was because he knew Ian was going to shuffle away the ooze, you know? That's pretty reasonable, actually. Is, uh, he, especially if he, his plan is to get Lum going. Right, exactly. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't want to see ooze on the side of, other side of the table. Our fourth land for Ian, and it's another basic, so... The oh, fact that he has, scavenging ooze number two. Yeah, the fact that he has multiple basics in play with a Mox Diamond is going to really, really make the... Uh, it's going it, to... I mean, it's going to make the uh, loam, loam Lock not as impressive as right. one would expect it to be. So ooze gets uh, gets that spell snare that we were talking about. We knew, uh, we knew Bennett had it, and then... Seems like a very reasonable choice to use it there. Uh, in the meantime, Ian then vials in the batter skull. Going to be forced to uh, main phase an ancient crutch here, giving Ian an opportunity to resolve uh, something like a knight for free. And now Bennett main phases that ancient grudge, takes care of the batter skull. Has to main phase that. Yeah, though. he has to. He has otherwise, it just it just floats back into Ian's hand. Yeah. yeah. Beep beep. Batter skull. I love that. And, and a Knight of the Reliquary, the and that's exactly what Bennett was worried about. It's not going to work out well for Bennett when his opponent has a Knight in play. Ian in for one with a Stoneforge Mystic. And Bennett... Bennett wants to get the get some loam, loam action happening, because I think he doesn't have land. He just doesn't have a green source. He's brainstorming again during his main phase, looking for that green source. Sees a Delver of Secrets, a brainstorm, and a brainstorm. So, just can't find that green source. On his next turn, Ian's going to be able to uh, use Wasteland uh, from the Knight of the Royal Quarry to get rid of his blue source. And then he's actually going to be, he's going to be brainstorm locked. So that his next two draws will not be... Yeah. Locked. Oh, never mind. Oh, so he actually did, okay, they'd he have did. one land. Yeah, he must have drawn that green turn source, or something. Yeah. Still not a green source. when he draws here. Oh, it looks like there's Swords to Flash in there. Yeah, this just looks so bad for Bennett at this point. The Knight is just too strong. Yeah, how many lands in uh, in Ian's graveyard? Bob coming down. Yeah, that's got to get Spell Snared. Knight is a 4-4. Four -four. The Scavenging Ooze was submerged. But uh, but then Ian cast uh, the Stoneforge Mystic and shuffled it away. I, yeah. At least that's the way the I next, saw it. Happen. And then the next time the Scavenging Ooze came down, it got spell snared. Right. Delver of Secrets from Bennett. Yeah, Delver coming down and uh, Swords to Plowshares. <laughs> Ian snaps Swords to Plowshares on it. The instant Swords to Plowshares. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like an interrupt. Emphatic. <laughs> I like the animated Swords of Plowshares. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Ian Ellis again uh, with this Sylvan Library just going to town. Cracking Bennett. Uh, how big is this knight? Is this knight a 6 6 or a 4 4 or what is it? Last we checked it was a 4 4. Okay. Brainstorm from Bennett. And trying to find an answer. And it seems really rough for him. Just cannot find this green source. All he needs is a fetch land or a trap. 
he's playing like how many fetches is he playing? Uh, yeah. Ian or uh, Bennett? Ben he's Snyder, got uh, he's nine three fetches. traps and nine fetches. So you know, twelve of these green sources in his deck. Still having a terrible time trying to find one. Yeah, he's gonna get the shuffle at least. Here's a ponder. Yeah, Sylvan Library is kind of insane. So, just to again clarify the scavenging goose situation, there's one in Ian 75. Yeah. He had it in play, it was submerged. Then it got shuffled then away. Then it got shuffled from away Stoneforge. from Stoneforge, but apparently Ian drew it. Well, he got it back, yeah. I mean, he was right, it's the same shuffling one. his deck and he right, had exactly. something library. He yeah, ended, yeah. Up, ended up drawing it and getting it back. That's all, I'm just trying to clarify that. Yes, it was the same one, but it was not the same one. You know, it wasn't like he drew it for the turn, it was, it was shuffled away. Sylvan Library dug him into it, I guess, after all the shuffling. Um, night number two, and yeah, Ian takes the game and match. Yeah, and that, that's the thing is, Rug Delver has a lot of trouble with knights, and if you're stumbling that bad, it's just too much. And uh, swinging on that 